Hey, it's Jerry with TradeTheFifth.com. I'm going to go through the indexes. This should be a pretty short video. Uh, IWM, usually start with, uh, it is continuing down. It is now uh, painted a wave three. We did talk about uh, downward extension move this week from the close on last week. And we have another close on the low of the day, near the low of the day, and near the low of the week for IWM. And uh, as you can see, the weekly close was uh, quite bearish. It was uh, very, very weak. Close to the week, we are now through the cloud. It is a th uh, fourth week extension to the downside. Uh, we painted a wave two here, which uh, you know could go a little bit lower. I think more than likely we're going to find ourselves at this 143.46 level which was a prior we talked about last week it was prior resistance uh, right in here and it was back tested a couple times as support and I do think we're likely going to test that we're now in this a pivot low area for IWM and I suspect this area could be a low I have done a Fibonacci time extension on this downward move on the daily chart so if you look at the daily we had this uh, ABC swing for the wave four pullback, and <clears throat> you project, <coughs> excuse me, the number of days it took to make that low pivot uh, forward to this high, and you find that a 100% time projection gets us to this day, uh, which is on, uh, let's see, five, should be Monday, I think. Our Monday is six three. Yeah, I mean it's within a couple of days. Oh, here we go. I'm sorry, uh, six four. So that's going to be Tuesday. So we might find a low uh, end of this move around uh, Tuesday time frame. That would be a hundred percent time projection. And you know, within one or two days, uh, we could find ourselves exhausted in that move. Uh, this would be a 127.2% Fibonacci extension from uh, this swing here. This high to low projected down here would be a 1272 extension. So I would not be surprised if we don't find ourselves at least some consolidation uh, coming up pretty soon in IWM. For our momentum indicators in IWM, uh, of course, the monthly close was week we had four weeks of down move we closed on the low of the month for May and that 14346 number here is coming up uh, pretty close to where we are now on the weekly uh, I will say the momentum indicators on the monthly are still pointed down we have come up to the zero line on the MACD and are now rolling over uh, on the weekly we are still headed down pointed down on both uh, RSI and MACD as well as on the daily. The daily is in a bit of an exhaustion area for RSI. We have certainly found ourselves down here a number of times on these uh, significant pullback moves and we're now in one of those low areas around 1718. So again I think that 143.46 or on the uh, you know daily one year chart this low volume node pocket at about 144 um, I think is the next area we're probably going to find right in this zone probably find some level of support and consolidation for IWM okay so if we move on to the queues same picture very weak close in the queues we've actually pointed a, uh, painted a wave 5 low we smashed through the wave 5 target <coughs> we had uh, quite a bit of gapping action uh, through the week uh, we had a week close on the end of last week and then we had more downside extension on the weekly chart close and low of the week we're now testing the very bottom end of the cloud uh, on the weekly chart we're still in the cloud but uh, looks very weak a lot of volume by the way on Friday uh, closed right on the lows so uh, again more downside Continuation in the queues is expected. If I look at queues on my momentum chart, uh, we certainly are down on RSI. We're, you know, a little bit 
uh, running out of steam. You know, there's some divergence here in MACD. So you see where we have made a lower low than back here. In this low, uh, we have a higher MACD value, which is a negative divergence. And I think that uh, I'd be looking for this move in the triple Qs to be exhausted um, on the daily chart. It is a way for pullback, so we could get you know back up into the target zone here. In the Qs, um, we are quite oversold on the weekly chart for MACD. We've had quite a few weeks down again uh, with the triple Qs. Now we've made our fourth weekly downside extension. We're into the cloud, not through the bottom of it, um, looking pretty weak. Uh, we're starting to get into a low area. You know, we broke this 48.21 we talked about last week for RSI that we had hit a few times before. We could make it all the way down here to this area, but I think we're probably due for a bounce. You know, the MACD is quite, um, you know, buried down here. So I think we, you know, we could find some support. We are below the 200 SMA on the daily chart. Uh, we've got quite a ways to go before we get, uh, this is the 50 week SMA. We're now down below it but the 200 week is uh, well down below us here and we found support when we hit that uh, you know the um, you know back here we we found you know back in uh, 2015 was the last time we actually came back and tested it so I think we're quite a ways away from testing that here certainly nothing coming into next week but the, the, the close was bearish on the week. I do think we should get a little bit more downside extension, likely find support pretty soon and consolidate, maybe work our way back up a little bit. If we continue to get negative news on the tariff front, um, you know, we're certainly not going to have any reason for looking to the upside and many of these indexes, um, you know, going forward. Triple Q's had a pretty bearish May. We took back uh, all of the month of April and well into the month of March uh, on this pullback in May. <clears throat> the real support, you know, the <coughs> next level of support, 169.17, and then from there, you know, we have some support well below that. The monthly MACD has, you know, flattened out a little bit, and the momentum indication of RSI is pointed down. So, still have downside momentum in the triple Qs. Going forward, if I look at SPY, the SPY again looks just as weak as the, uh, let me get rid of this drawing here. SPY closed on the lows of the week. It was a pretty bearish week, right? We closed on the lows and it was a pretty long extension to the downside. We are in the weekly. Um, cloud for the SPY looking for some level of support here if we can get it uh, we have had a fifth wave move through the target on the SPY uh, again this red zone is a resistance zone and I don't think we're you know if we start getting any movement back upwards we're gonna find a lot of resistance as we start getting through some moving averages and other things above us in the SPY if I look on my momentum chart for the SPY. Uh, again, weekly close was uh, negative. MACD is still headed down as is RSI. We are getting into the oversold on daily and we have hit a low end of MACD for uh, the SPY on the daily chart. Uh, we are into the weekly cloud as we can see here. We're still above the monthly cloud in the SPY. Uh, as shown by the green dots down here in the bottom row. The MACD is rolling over a little bit in the SPY on the monthly chart. It was a very negative monthly close for May. Uh, we closed and almost took two full months back in this movement and we closed on the low of the month and I'm looking for more downside continuation. Uh, there isn't really any news going on that's going to make me change my mind uh, yet all the news seems somewhat negative, uh, you know, of what's been going on lately. Uh, we are likely going to test this pivot here at 272.42. Uh, 
uh, on the SPY on the weekly chart. That was a weekly support pivot level that we bounced off of. And I think the next target we should be looking for is the 272.42, uh, which is also this pivot here in the SPY. So all of that looks negative. Uh, really not much more to say here. Um, I will add one other thing that also makes me, or two other things quickly that I'll show. This is the fear and greed index, and typically when this index starts to get into the extreme fear zone, uh, that's another area that I start thinking about, um, you know, finding some level of, of bottoming out and support. You know, we've got a lot of people now that have, doing some, have been doing some pretty strong selling, so I think that that's an area uh, to be thoughtful of, and I will, if I can find my VIX chart here. A little surprising with the move in the bonds that's been going on. The bonds have been, you know, quite vertical. We also had a pretty big move up in gold after the uh, Mexico tariff news from uh, President Trump here in, in the U.S. Uh, the VIX has closed. You know, the, we had extreme uh, negative, uh, you know, move up in the VIX, which was ve very negative. But you can see the VIX has not hit those high extreme levels even though we're finding lower and lower prices and that seems <coughs> to me to indicate we're still you know probably the initial move uh, down that we had this one here you know with the China uh, tariff news is now getting somewhat baked in I think the Mexico news is certainly not good and if we continue down that path we might find ourselves uh, getting extremely much lower but the VIX would not seem to indicate we have had the same kind of put buying action that we had in this area here. So, um, you know, at this point, the VIX is not indicating any more, uh, you know, real extreme fear going on with uh, the put buying activity. I will say that the three month, 10 year treasury yield that I've shown on the last several videos, it has gone a little bit deeper and uh, that continues to be somewhat of a concern, but the twos, tens have really not moved much uh, beyond what they were last week. So without the twos, tens inverting, uh, the three the three month, 10 year inverting is a bit of a concern, but with the twos, tens not yet inverted, it doesn't seem like the market seems as worried about it. Um, so that's where we're at. I think I'll close it there. It looks like more downside continuation I expect next week. If we have any more negative tariff news, we might get a big washout. We probably need a, a pretty big washout in the market to find some support like we bet, did back in December. I, I don't see anything that's creating a likelihood of testing the December lows at this point. We're quite a bit away from that. Um, but, you know, downside continuation given the close and, and how the week turned out for last week. Looks like it's in the cards. Okay, that's it for the week. Oh, I will say uh, on the expected move that we had last week, we did break through all the low side of the expected move. We tested in the middle of the week. We did look like we were going to bounce back up a little bit, then got the real negative news on Friday with more tariffs in Mexico, and that pushed us below the expected moves uh, at the end of the week. Um, the expected move for next week in the three indexes, we've got the ES at about 59 points, slightly lower than it was, the NQ 188, a little bit lower, and the YM at 536 points, plus or minus, for one standard deviation expected move that's on the charts for those that are using the levels that we've talked about. Okay, that's it. Good luck next week. Take care.